circumstances, her mother knows her own child. And this mother knew that despite his unformed and undefined features that the living child was her son. And she fought to reclaim him. She took her custody battle to the highest court of her day. She took it to King Solomon. His decision would rule the matter. And when I got before the king, each woman argued that the living child was her child. And King Solomon was unable to tell who the true mother was from their testimony. And there were no other witnesses. But King Solomon had been blessed by God with wisdom and insight. He knew something about motherhood. Yes, yes. Uh, so he, he understood that the love and nurture of the living child's mother would not allow that mother to stand idly by and watch her child be killed. So in order to determine whose child it was, King Solomon said, bring me a knife. I'm going to cut the child in two, give half to one, half to the other. And then at that decree from the king, the child, the living child's mother cried, please, my lord, give her the living boy. Certainly don't kill him. That mother's love cried that above all else, this child shall live. And in essence, she said, this is my son. And I want to raise him. I, I want him to live with me. But if I can't do that, then let her have it. I can live without him if I know that he's alive. Please, King Solomon, let my child live. This mother was willing to give her child away. Glad they let the other woman raise him just so that he could live. So I want to talk with you all for a few moments about the kind of mother's love that says, this child shall live. You see, that kind of mother's love is present when a woman recognizes the true facts of her situation and with tears in her eyes, hands her child over to another woman to raise. It's a love that says, I know I can't give this child what this child needs in this world to survive. So I'm going to do what's best for the child. Because yes, yes. <laughs> this child shall live. Yes. The kind of mother's love that cries, this child to live is not even confined to those women who've been blessed by God to have children of their flesh. But it's to be found in foster mothers and adoptive mothers who rear another woman's child. It's a love that cries, this child shall live. And y'all know there was a time in the black community at least where you didn't hear much about social services and Legal adoption issues. Now, I need y'all to know I don't have anything against social services. I earned my living there for 12 years or more. But there was a time in our community where if there was a child that needed assistance for any reason, there was always someone in the family of the community whose love cried, this child shall live, and took that child in. Yes, yes, yes. They, they said, this child can come be with me. I may not have much, but I'll share whatever I have with this child. This child shall live. The kind of mother's love that cries, this child shall live, is the kind of love that causes that older sister in the community to take the younger sister under her wing. Yes, yeah, she... She reaches out because she sees the young woman struggles. And she wants to show her uh, the ways of budgeting, you know, to, to make ends meet in the house. 
give a tip on raising children and how to keep the home fires burn. Yeah, yeah. That's the kind of mother's love that says, this child shall leave. In order to ensure the life of a child, a mother's love causes her to sacrifice her own wants and her own desires for that of a child. Yeah, each of us has witnessed a mother who sacrificed and, 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 and given up things for herself, who's worked herself to the bone to provide for the material needs of her child. And that kind of sacrifice comes from a love that says, this child shall leave. Yes, and, and, and you know, it's that same love <laughs> that, call, that may cause a mama to deny her child material things. Young folks know mama might not value that $200 pair of tennis shoes because she wants you to to grow up to be known for who you are and not for what you wear. A mother's desire for her child to live will cause that mama to punish that child and, 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 and discipline her child even when it hurts the mom. It's a love that understands children much, must learn early on that all actions in life have consequences. And it teaches a child how to face the consequences yes, yes. of their actions. The love that says this child shall live not only imposes punishment, but it teaches discipline. You know, we live in a world where everybody wants to have already arrived. Come on, y'all, walk with me. Nobody wants to start at the bottom and work their way to the top. We're not willing to buy a Ford or a Chevrolet at the first car. 16-year-olds want their own Mercedes and Lexus and Porsche and BMW. Mm. It's no longer the done thing to buy a starter home and wait to work your way up. But everybody was suddenly wants to have their dream house. You know, the, the desire to have now and not delay out of gratification is what causes many to go into the drug trade. And because it seemingly provides instant success. But I need to tell y'all there's no such thing as instant success. You don't suddenly become. There is a process of becoming. Mm -hmm. You don't suddenly arrive, but there's a process. You start at point A, and you work toward your destination. Mother who wants her child to live teaches the child to set goals and to work toward those goals yeah. in life. A mother who wants her child to live sets standards for that child. The love that cries, this child should live, <laughs> says if you're going to sleep under my roof, eat from my table, then you're going to follow my rules. And then there's some rules that have some, some standards. You know, not the kind of rules that allow mom and, and children to party all night long together. Because that doesn't teach anything about respect. Instead, the mother's love that cries, this child shall live, <laughs> says standards. It's the kind of love that understands that for a child to live and survive in this world, that child must learn that there's standards for behavior, standards of behavior right. yeah. in all walks of life. Right. There's standards of behavior at home, yeah. standards of behavior at school, yeah. 
They use standards of behavior in church. The love that cries this child to live also teaches the child that you are somebody. That love understands that to be black in America and to survive, the child must learn who and whose they are. That kind of love teaches black history so that the child will have some sense of self-identity. It teaches a history of which we're not ashamed. Teaches that as black Americans, as African Americans, we can all our heads high. Yes. For we come from royalty. Yes. We are the sons and daughters of African kings and queens. Yes. We have a rich heritage. It teaches that we are children of the king. Yes. Yes. Don't you see that in order for to ensure the life of any child, to make certain that the child has the knowledge needed to survive in this life, that above all, the child must know that they belong to God. Yes, yes. A mother's love recognizes that the very best way that she can teach, be sure her child has what it takes to survive in this world is to tell the child about Jesus. Amen. But not only does that Amen. lead to life, Amen. but it leads to eternal life. Amen. I confess to you today that I'm one of those that's challenged by Mother's Day. It's a holiday that really challenges me. For you see, when I was 10, my father was buried on Mother's Day. Mama's gone home now. She's been gone for some time. But I need you to know that my mama was good to me. She nurtured me as a child, and she gave her own body for me. She took care of me when I was sick. She whipped me when I was disobedient. She sacrificed to give me material things. She waited up all night for me when I insisted upon living the nightlife. Yes, yes. She listened to me. She gave me good motherly advice. And she was, to the very day she died, my very best friend. You see, I could call her anytime. She would share my joys, and she would share my sorrows. She would pray with me, and she'd pray for me. Yet I'm all of a care, caring out of all of her nurturing. The most lasting thing my mother ever did for me, and what I'll never forget, something that she told me when I was about 12 years of age. Please allow me to share that experience with you, and I'll be out of your way. You see, I grew up in a home where family prayer was important. And y'all may not know much about that. But my parents believed in family prayer. And after daddy died, mama carried on that tradition. Uh -huh. We had family prayer. Yes. Well, what I remember was a Sunday morning, and our family was on our way to church. Now, we usually had family prayer at home, but for some reason on that particular Sunday morning, we had not done so. Yet mama was determined to get that family prayer time in. Uh -huh. And so we did it in the car. And as was our custom, one child would recite a Bible verse. Another child would pray. And then mama would speak on some biblical principle. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. 
Y'all are remember it like it was yesterday. This Sunday morning, Mama said this. She said, I want y'all to know that you can come to me at any time and that you can tell me anything. I'm your mama, and I love you. I'll do anything I can for you. Mama went even, even went so far to say, if you kill somebody, you can tell me. But I want you to know, children, that if there ever comes a time in your life when you can't get to me, when you feel you can't come to me, know that there is one you can talk to. Know there's one who can help you even when I can't. Because the secret, be assured he won't tell nobody. Hold on. Go find the closet. Go to the bathroom if you have to. Get off by yourself and tell God about it. Talk to Jesus. He can do more for you than I ever could. He won't turn you away. Just give yourself to him. He's always there. And he's waiting just to talk to you. Y'all, I was only 12. I didn't pay much attention to it at the time. But later on, years later, at a very low point in my life, I remembered my mama's words. I was in a dark emotional pit. I had reached a very low emotional point. Rocking and reeling from doing some things uh, that I thought I was big enough to do. And as I remember Mama's words that Sunday afternoon, <laughs> I, I stole away. <laughs> I stole away to a quiet place within me. And I talked to God that day. For myself. Told him, I said, if you, mama, says you are, come <laughs> see about me. I made God for myself that day. <laughs> and I thank God for my mother. I thank God for her love. She wanted me to live. <laughs> she wanted me to have a good life. <laughs> she wanted me to have <laughs> eternal life. <laughs> so she told <laughs> about God. <laughs> she told me <laughs> about the Lord. <laughs> if this child's going to live, <laughs> child's got to know about Jesus. <laughs> God bless you. spoke to all of us, mothers as well as fathers, knowing that we too have those same experiences, amen, and in order to stand and be kind for and be in the will of God, we must have God ourselves, amen, she spoke of a godly mother, 
we have a godly mother, and godly mother's going to be concerned about the children. And I remember my grandmother, how she used to stand there, sat there under that old rocking chair, under that orange tree with a smoke bucket in front of her, keeping the mosquitoes away. She'd be rocking in that old rocking chair, and she'd be singing. I wonder if the light from the lighthouse will shine, shine on me. Then she go in and say, shine, shine, shine on me. I wonder if that light from the lighthouse will shine. And today we have, we have the same situation. God has instilled in us a spirit that is concerned not only about our own children, but about one another's children. And he said to us, be still and know that I'm God. And that we be still and recognize God as God is. God will come to our rescue. He's waiting. He's waiting. As you stand, as you stand today and listen as you listen to this wonderful sermon, I'm sure that we all have something to search ourselves with. Lord, have I played that role? Have I been obedient to your word? Have I stood for mature like I should have? Oh, I know it's some. Sometimes you just want to give up and run. Sometimes you want to turn your, just turn your back and walk away, but that is my child. Regardless of what comes, I'm going to stand by my child. We must have that kind of spirit. The doors of the church are open. The doors of the church are open. If everyone want to come, please feel free to come at this time. The prayer line is open. The altar is waiting. That does one just want to come and bring God, bring God with you. Say, Lord, I have made mistakes in my life, but after hearing your word today, it reminded me that at some time I have gone this way. But Lord, help us, help us to realize that this world is not our home, but we have a responsibility to live in a way that. Somebody can see our lifestyle. As the scripture said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. And every now and then we find ourselves crying and don't know why we're crying. But I heard him say, be still and know and cast your cares upon me. Maybe I'll be the other one to come. You, John, this is Mother's Day. Maybe your mother's not with you now. But there's the effort that she has set. Maybe your mother's not with you, not here. But you can still lift them up in prayer. You come. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but what? Have everlasting life. You come. Give your heart to God. That'll be another last call. Let's call. Maybe somebody said, pray for me. Maybe you know someone that needs prayer. You could bring them to the altar. Amen. Oh, yes. Somebody said, I came to Jesus as I were. I was weary, I was wounded, and I was sad. But I came to Jesus. And you know one thing I like about when you come to Jesus? He said, come as you are. You come, and God will do the rest. Ain't it good? If you know him for yourself when you wave your hand, if you know him for yourself, will you raise your hand? If you know him for yourself, will you wave your hand? Oh, yes. 
And I ask you to come. Let's come into the altar. This is prayer time. This is prayer time. We come to the altar. John at the altar. Amen. It's more room. It's more room. You come. You come. Children, you come. Lift your mother. Mother, you come and lift your children. You come to the altar. You come to the altar. We talked about this morning. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. This is a mighty good time for to bring them to the altar. And when you put them on the altar, God will take over from there. Oh, what a time. What a time. Praise God. We're going to pause just for a moment. Let you make your own confession to you, God. Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. Lord, if I withdraw thyself from me, Lord, where the shall I go? I have no other place to go, Lord. You are my shelter. You are my high tiber. Lord, I have nowhere else to go but to you. Therefore, I come this morning, Lord, for you said, cast all your cares upon me. Now I care for you. Now I will take care of you. Oh, Lord, I can remember, imagine that woman who said to the king, don't kill him, but give it to her. Oh, what a, time, what a, what a, what a testimony to give your own child away just to, that this child may live. Let's go in prayer. I ask you to pray. Remember, my sister, I got the word yesterday evening that she have cancer in her bones. And her hip bone is broken. And she walked with, with a cane, with a walker, rather. And I know God hears prayer. Our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Lord, we come this morning around this altar as humble as we know how. Thanking you for the word that has stirred our spirit. Thank you, Lord, for just when you woke us into this day and giving us opportunity, Lord, to do the things that we failed to do on yesterday. But, Lord, we say thank you now. Thank you for your gift, Lord. Thank you for all that you've done. But thank you for giving us, Lord, the knowledge to know that this world is not our home, but just a dressing room. We're dressing now, Lord, to be with you. Lord, we ask you to touch, move around this altar. Touch, Lord, you know you knows us by name and you knows by our address. But most of all, you know our condition. Lord, we ask you to touch right now. Grant the petitions that have been made to you. Not only around this altar, Lord, but those who are in the uh, in this Touch right now. Lord, I thank you for the speaker. I thank you for the speaker, Lord. How you have God given her the gift to reach out and help others by just speaking your word. Thank you, Lord, 
for just making it so plain that even the fool will not add her. But she reached, she touched the Lord this morning. She told us what to do and how to do it. And that we have to do as we wanted to live on. Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for Sister Eva this morning, who has set the example in this church. It was recognized. Lord, thank you. Thank you that we have someone who still cares about you and cares about us. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done now. We're going to keep giving you the praises. For we thank you, Lord, for just, just life, health, and strength. Be able to kneel like this altar. We thank you for all that you've done, Lord. You gave us our pastor back, and he is moving now as lightning, Lord. Thank you. Now, Lord, be with us. Keep us, and we shall be kept. For us in your name we pray. And the church say amen. Just say amen. Just say amen again. God bless you. Amen. worshiping God. It has been a wonderful day. We want to thank our speaker for the wonderful word that she has brought forth today. We couldn't have asked for anything better. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to this Women's Day Choir. Thank you so much in the head, Miss Myra Brooks, for all that you have done. I want to remind you in way of announcement again that the sheet for sign up to see the movie is on the secretariat door. The van will be leaving at 11.30. The van, that's Friday the 17th to see the movie Breakthrough. If there is nothing else, Jones, if you could come to the end right here. We just want to thank you for, it was during this time I was trying to find a speaker and because it's such a busy weekend, uh, so many people were not available and Reverend Jones just stepped in and to come to my rescue. <laughs> thank you, Lord. <laughs> and uh, I just thank the Lord for her. It's good to know somebody that knows the word. Uh, on behalf of Box Creek and uh, the entire ministerial staff, Reverend, Reverend um, Wells and the entire ministerial staff, we want to thank you uh, just a little bit of a appreciation for your time. God, we, we thank God for such a wonderful word. She took us back, didn't she? Yeah. I'm just so thankful to the Lord. to have been here today. Myra talked 
talked about my coming to her rescue, but she comes to mine on a daily basis. <laughs> and I praise God for her. I thank God for this choir. You bless my soul this morning. God bless you. God bless you. Let us bow for our benediction and now may the love of God the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ the fellowship the, the communion of the Holy Spirit may this Trinity be with us all now and forevermore Amen This fire leaves this sacred altar. I pray that there's a fire burning deep in each one of us. We leave this place with that light shine in a dark world. Tap your neighbor and say, neighbor, I got it, and I pass it on to you. I love you, and there's nothing you can do about that.